as a corner, backpedaling is probably the most important thing to work on. We do so much change of direction. Footwork, speed, agility. Just reacting to the football, keeping my eyes up because I don't know where the ball is going. I don't know who has the ball. Uh, this is the way I start my workout. The three cone break and drive, working on anticipation and awareness. You basically backpedal to the cone. You see the cone out of your peripheral. You break, you drive back to this cone. You alternate feet as you're breaking to each cone. You see this one out of your peripheral, you break with the opposite foot. You drive. It's good because you need to work on your anticipation as a corner and being able to see everything around you. And you break to the last cone. This is just for, mostly for conditioning in case, you know, you gotta stay patient in your back pedal and be ready to break at any time. All right, this drill is particular for the uh, cornerback. It's called the sit down squat. You sit down in the chair. And you keep your chair straight as you back paddle. Keep your feet under your armpit. Drive, drive. Finish, finish. It's a nice little drill to help a cornerback maintain his posture while he's back paddling. Make, make sure he's staying low. Make sure he has good knee and ankle bend. Um, just stay in front of the receiver. Uh, I believe everything works works together as a family. Your, your core, the quads. Uh, your feet, you have to make sure everything is up to par so you can be an elite athlete and an elite cornerback. Hi, my name's Chip. I'm here with my man Tyron Matthew here at Fisher Sports. We're going to go ahead, we're going to work on some defensive back drills, try and get Ty ready for the season. First one we're going to do here, I call it the DB lateral run drill. He's just going to backpedal out of the start. He's going to drop back into a series of lateral runs. On the last one, he's going to plant, break, sprint through, and catch the football. Backpedal good, turn and go. Turn, good, turn the hips. Good, ball coming. My position is a reaction in every position. So I don't know where the receiver is going at. I don't know what direction he's going at. But if my foundation, if I have a good base, I'm able to switch directions and change directions pretty easily. And uh, you know, I won't have any false steps or any false movements. And I think that's the biggest thing a DB wants to eliminate. You know, you don't want to take too many steps because those receivers, it's a timing offense, so they have seven steps. I don't want to take eight. So the next drill we're going to perform is a W drill. This drill is going to consist of cones set up five yards apart, and he's going to start the top cone backpedaling to the first cone, reacting off that first cone, accelerating up to the second cone. He's going to continue this process throughout the whole W drill. Uh, well, first off, you want to keep your, your, your shoulders over your toes. You always want to have that low level, great center of gravity, shoulders over your toes so you can be able to come out your burst quickly. No, it's more about control. You know, it's about controlling yourself, getting a good T-step, getting a good plant, and coming out and accelerating those first three steps out of the break. This is probably one of the most important drills you can do. You can break at different angles. Uh, that one I just showed was a 45 degree break, but you can break at 90 degrees as well. And it's just different angles, you know, being ready prepared to come out to break wherever the receiver's taking you. All right, this particular drill we're gonna do now is hurdles. It's about changing direction. It's about how to change direction real quick and fast. So these guys gonna step left, left to right, knee up, high knee. And when I give them a command, they just take off. Nope. To a defensive back because, um, like I said, receivers are coming out at full speed. We're back paddling. We have to have the ability to have nice, fluent hips to be able to open up and be able to uh, change direction and run behind the receiver or keep him in front of us. Let's go. There you go. My name is Ronnie Braxton, aka Real Truth. That's what all the guys call me. This is Chris Harris Jr. Going to be demonstrating a drill that creates low level of play so you can change direction and come in and out of your breaks if you like. And then, as you see, we're going to work our explosion at the same time. The game of football is eyes, feet, hips, and hands. And that's kind of the philosophy that I go by and that I was taught. And what the drill that you're going to be noticing is I want you to pay attention to, I want you to pay attention to his eyes. I want you to pay attention to his foot placement and his base. Then I want you to pay attention to his hip mobility, right? And then at the last of the part, we always win the ball in the, in the moment of truth with the hands. Like we did today with the hurdles, that flexibility. So I, I wish I would have did that type of flexibility work as a younger uh, player. I'd probably no telling how flexible I'd be now. <laughs> 
Here we got the resistance band run. Very important for a defensive back to chase down those wide receivers and intercept passes for a DB. Here you go, Malcolm. Ready to go. He's gonna lean at a 45 degree angle. His leg is gonna be in a piston form type action. And we're gonna do this drill for about 30 seconds, fast as we can. And time. I love the drill. Every time I come to the gym, I try to do as much as I can. I keep my speed up, tighten my core, build my stamina. NFL, game speed, if you don't have speed, it's not too much you can do. So I think that band resistance run, that's one of my top drills that I like to do. This machine is working on explosion. I'm exploding out, the machine's pulling me back in, I'm exploding back again for 20 reps. And it's quick explosive movements. But you could also do this at a stadium with like stadium steps and weight vests and jump up on the first step and jump back down, jump back up, jump back down 20 times. And it's about how quick can you get back off the ground after you land it. You know, it's not about how high you can jump per se in this drill, but it's about getting up and down, getting up and down, working on your explosion and your quickness and your foot reaction speed. So that's what I'm doing here. So it's about the impact to my legs and about, you know, being able to get out of it, getting back out of that. You know, you can get put in a lot of different positions on the field. In regards to what position you're in, you gotta get out of it. You know, you gotta make a move. So, just to help with that. All right, the next drill we're gonna do is called our DB jam drill. This is important for defensive backs like Malcolm, getting off the receivers, jamming them at the line. Uh, each cone here is gonna represent a receiver. All we're gonna do is just mirror each other, shuffle down the line. He's gonna punch in each cone. Let's get started. Good. Go. More punch. They spin it up. Go. Today we're going to be explaining a little bit about what we do as far as, you know, hand placement, you know, eyes, feet, hips, and hands. Again, understanding proper hand placement as you place your hands on shoulder pads, understanding how to reroute and control the receiver off the line of scrimmage. Chris has got a band on, a resistance band that adds about 20 pounds of pressure to each press. So with that being said, when he comes out, his hands will be faster, quicker, stronger, Right, and so I'm gonna just try to give him different releases uh, and try to work my way upfield. Proper hand placement, eyes, feet, hips, and hands. Yeah, when I'm playing man, eyes are right here on his waist, and that's gonna tell me where to go. Say if he goes this way, I like to kick slide back this way. Say if he goes back to the right, I can't slide back this way. So it's about working your feet, having that hand placement, as he tries to knock it down, and then having that great eye placement. All right, this particular drill right here to um, work on the DBs, how to stabilize the receivers on the line, the offensive line, all you're doing is punching each receiver. Each one of these cones is a receiver. The black is the release, the release cone. So we're gonna punch each cone, then release at the end. It's important to be physical at the line of scrimmage because it, it can throw off the timing between the quarterback and the receiver. And um, the more physical you are at the point of attack, the better off you'll be deeper in the route. All right, it's going to be quick, pop, 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 pop. Every, every receiver get in front, punch twice. I'm focused on staying low, um, making sure my eyes are low, make sure my eyes are at the midpoint of the, uh, the receiver um, body, make sure my, my hand placement is always perfect because I don't want to hit a receiver on the outside of the shoulder because he can easily lock my hand down. I want to make sure I get it in a nice position at the pec so I can control the receiver where I want him to go. So the final drill we're about to perform is going to be a reaction drill put in tie with everything that we've done before with the previous drills. To set up this drill, we're going to start with two cones placed 10 yards distance from the other cones down here that you see with the colors. These cones will be placed two yards apart from each other with a three yard gap in between. These cones right here is gonna be where the DB comes through backpedaling. As he opens up, he's gonna catch the football and he's gonna accelerate to a color of cones that I distinguished before he catches the football. Go. Red. For DBs, everything is about reaction. You know, you have to react to the ball being, you know, in the air, you gotta react to a receiver running routes reacting off of his cuts. Um, this is a good drill because 
you gotta focus on catching the ball before you react. You know, a lot of times you see DBs dropping interceptions because they look in the field trying to score before they catch the ball. So this is just a, a good reenactment of those type of situations, catching the ball and then reacting after that.